Hello, my name is Michael, and today I want to take a look at the inertia drive. The inertia drive is, in my opinion, one of the greatest parts added by mods. <clears throat> it allows you to it allows you to control the creation's position, pitch, yaw, and roll. Now, what 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 is pitch, yaw, and roll? Well, to put it simply. Pitch is the angle on the y-axis. I call it the downwards angle. It's like the tilt you go up and down with. Then there's yaw. That's the angle on the z-axis. I call that the turning angle. And last we have the roll, which is the angle on our x-axis. I mostly don't use it at all, but you can use it if you're stylish and you want that you want to turn with it or something. Okay. So, <clears throat> the inertia drive. When placing, we see two arrows, a large arrow and a small arrow. Large arrow shows us the front of the inertia drive, and the small arrow shows us the top. But don't worry, this orientation can be overridden by uh, connecting a seat or the orientation module. The large variant does not have any arrows, thus it requires a seat or a module to have its uh, orientation set. When we use E on it, we will, see, well, we will, should see this help warning and a pretty scary menu with many settings. But don't worry, we'll go one by one, not really one by one, but one category at a time and explain each of these settings so you know how to use them. Firstly, we have the anti-graph, which is the anti-gravitational force of the drive. You can adjust this force layer, we'll, we'll, co we'll cover that. Then we have the auto level and auto pitch, which makes the drive automatically level a pitch and roll. Then we have all these power, uh, all these green power settings. Axial, which means forward and back. Lateral, which means left and right. Vertical, that's up and down, and then we have the pitch, yaw, uh, pitch, yaw, and roll. I said that out of order. And then we have the yellow, the dampening. The dampening is how much resistance does the inertia drive have against said movement. For example, axial. I usually leave this be because, uh, you know, any any dampening is okay. As long as there's some, it's good for uh, it's good for balancing the force you need to turn the way you want to, like precise enough and smooth enough. And lastly, we have the sign colored settings, which is power anti gravity in percent, and power and auto levels, uh, the power of the auto levels. Power anti graph. This setting allows you to set the power of the anti-gravity to a percentage of the power of the gravity which is pretty self-explanatory. For example 200% will make your creation rise against the gravity at the speed of gravity and 50% uh, will make it fall down at half the gravity. So yes you can make like a moon uh, <laughs> a moon vehicle basically. And then we have the auto levels uh, I haven't mentioned this, but uh, auto level pitch and roll have their own settings because you haven't w want them to be a bit lower than your pitch and roll controls, or you don't even use pitch and roll controls in your creation. So the settings are here. You have to set these settings instead of the green ones. And if you set them too high, then the creation is going to overshoot when it's trying to correct. It's is going to overshoot the value, the target, and that will cause it to oscillate from side to side, or up and down, or rolling from side to side. So it's best to start with a low value and slowly raise them. And it goes for all of these values except the anti-graph. Just leave that at, leave that at 100 if you want a flying vehicle. Now, okay, we know how to set this thing up, but how do we control this? Well. That that's where the smart buttons come in. 
These come in several varieties to fulfill your uh, decorative needs. And it doesn't really matter if it's a switch or a button because we can change its behavior using you. Now we can change its mode or behavior as I call it. So a button can be a switch and a switch can be a button. This is a switch, right? See? And now it's a button. We also can rename them, but we're not going to be using uh, we're not going to be using this uh this function in this video. Because if we connect them to the drive, the settings change. Instead of name, we have select function over here. And this is how we actually control the inertia drive. We have all the controls over here laid out. Most of them are pretty self-explanatory, maybe except the global ones, which uh, will move it along a global axis, basically. So, uh, if you know, if it's for example yaw to the right and uh, pitching down slightly, and you would normally push forward, then you're going to go a bit sideways. Well, not a bit sideways. You're going to go sideways. But if you use forward the global, then you're going to be going forward no matter how tilted or, you know, no matter any angles, it ignores it. Then we have uh, the emergency lift, which is going to put the creation on the lift in case something goes wrong. Well, if it gets a signal. And then we have the modes, but mode buttons. I haven't explained what modes are yet, so I'm going to do that now. The modes are a way to set uh, the preset settings so you don't have to change them manually just by switching between them also you can copy and paste modes down here to m save some time when you're setting up your creation and now we can actually use this drive to make some sort of a flying machine like you can see here well for this demo I used FANT uh, WSD converters as well as sitting converter or play is in chair converter <laughs> in seat sorry uh, because we don't want it to be on when you're out because you can leave it in the air and you know just lose it that way so that's the only like special thing and then I just added these up and down buttons which uh, I've added because for some reason, these smart buttons don't appear on the toolbar when you uh, enter a seat. So let me demonstrate how well this works. Well, well, how it actually works. Okay. Who the hell thought of... So these are the up and down buttons, 1 and 2, as you can see. And A and D, I've paired to yaw right and yaw left. This will allow me to travel pretty freely. Anyways, there's also these two buttons what I hooked up to mode up and mode down or previous the next mode Which I can use to slow down or speed up Yeah So that is the first demo But okay, let's say you want a more realistic vehicle and you don't want to be pressing all those buttons all the time well That's when other mods come in for example, the mod pack with the number logic, because the inertia drive still can be affected by thrusters and impacts, as you could have seen in the demo, where I hit the other demos accidentally. And we can use that to our advantage uh, by using the orientation block. Don't, co uh, don't confuse it with the orientation module. We can set it to play a camera and take its output multiplied by a constant which is the for uh, which is the force that the thrusters are going to have and use that to control a camera <laughs> control the flying machine also if you want to make it any bigger or heavier you have to change that constant but we'll get to that later first let me show you how this thing works and how well it works so I, I don't even need a uh, up and down well I don't need A and D uh, yeah A and D so I used it to go up and down but other than that I can just turn like this fly around fle freely oops 
sorry for a habit and also I can do down by pitching down go up by pitching up So yeah, you can see it works pretty well. Oh yeah, and quick turning doesn't do well for it. Like it's it's trying, but it's gonna overshoot the target value and it may start oscillating. That's why you should be careful with setting all these constants and values because oscillation can cause really big problems. That's also the reason why I have a tracker on this in case it goes haywire and just bursts out of here. Okay. So the only problem is when I want to make this bigger or smaller or change its mass and you know all that stuff It's gonna take different amounts of force to move it on different axes So I would have to change all the constants again For that I have a solution which is not that good, but it works Which is again have a constant but multiply it with the mass of the creation But I'll have to not use the drive to move on any other axis, well, on any axis, only for auto leveling and anti gravity, because yeah, it's quite obvious, isn't it? Because if I'm gonna add, it, if I'm going to be adding weight, uh, then all the values that don't adjust will be well slow. <laughs> okay, so let me show you this one. I think I have it set up, so it sort of works. And I also have the uh, radar, so I know where the, where the face, so I'm flying straight. And as you can see, it works pretty well, like the other one. But this time, controls are, it's controlled by thrusters. So it's pretty much, uh, yeah, pretty much the same. And let me show what happens if I add some weight to it. Uh, let's see some extremely heavy blocks. Okay. So now it's heavier, and if you were using just the inertia drive or the other setup, then the speeds wouldn't adjust as they have here. As you can see, it's roughly the same speed as it was. Well, let me move a bit so you can see the speed. Yeah, it's roughly the same speed. And lastly, the Inertia drive also works with any other way of turning a thing. For example, using these gyros from Fantmod, which are, I'd say, pretty OP. <laughs> Though they have the. Oh, yeah. Some of you, I, I think, some of you wouldn't. Uh, would get the idea to just use this setup, but instead of multiplying, just comparing it to zero. So if, if it wants to turn left, then it's gonna send one. Or and it was, <laughs> if it wants to turn right, it's gonna send a zero. Uh, the reason why that doesn't work, or you know any other system that just compares, is that it's going to be the output has to be binary for it to work with the inertia drive, and usually it, you have to re uh, have it, oof. and usually you have to have it turn very slowly, because otherwise you're gonna to overshoot the target value by quite a bit. <laughs> So this is the great, great middle ground with Windows 2. Also, you could try using the gyros. I haven't tried that, but I think they don't work with number logic. That's that question sorted out. But it is possible. I'm not saying it's like bad or something. It's, it's just slow. And slow might not be bad. If you're making some sort of a turret, for example, like this one, you could use it despite not having a uh, number control. So let me show you this little body here. So this is a unit facer from Fant mod, mod. These gyros are from Fant mod, as I mentioned. That's a smart button, and that is the mod pack receiver slash so send the modem. Is it a modem? I don't know how they're called. Okay, so let me grab this guy and put him out somewhere, and now put it down. It's constantly aiming at me, or it could be aiming at enemy robots. You know, it's it's a really good thing to build a, a little army of protectors with. You just have to make a, uh, make a detector to detect if it's actually shooting at a robot or itself <laughs> or you or your base even. Yeah, these things can get a bit out of hand. 
so yeah that is the inertia drive quite a great thing this single part has a lot of potential all I shown here was a bunch of flyers and a turret but you can use it to create much greater things by the way I've been playing with a mod pack called rusty fusion this mod pack is for survival uh, and has to be installed manually but it adds a lot of things because it's a mod pack it contains the mod pack uh, MJM sci-fi mod the new legend mod uh, yeah I think that's all but if you have those mods individually you should have all the parts that I had in this video so also if you're interested uh, in me pl making a series on it because I'm gonna be <laughs> talking a bit more fluently when I'm playing and not reading a script or working by a script it actually puts more stress on me tell me in the comments if you want a series survival series with the rusty mod fusion mod pack I enjoyed telling you about the inertia drive and how it works and I hope I'll see you in the next video